So today we're going to talk about function documentation. Um, so some learning objectives are to describe the benefits of well-developed function documentation. And then most of the chapter is on this R oxygen two basics and the different sections um, that will be filled in um, by R oxygen two. Um, so we'll discuss some definitions of documentation and a little bit about workflow and then general formatting, such as the different sections and um, best practices. So why do we care about documentation? Um, this is where we're telling users about our package. Um, so, right, we know catchy, like if you do a better job with documentation, it'll be easier on the users and probably have more use. Um, it's also useful for your future self and for other people that might want to contribute. The advantages to using our Oxygen 2 for your documentation workflow is that your code, so all of your functions and your .r file and the documentation, which is these R Oxygen 2 comments, are located together in the same place. Um, and then you can use Markdown in those our Oxygen 2 comments instead of learning um, the markup language of these R document files, .rd. Um, it automates some things and it gives you some tools for sharing content across documentation of different um, functions um, and also across vignettes. Okay, so there are four main steps to the documentation workflow. So unlike what we saw before with sort of like the test that where you could run a func run a use this function and it would create a file for you, the um, documentation workflow starts when you add these R oxygen comments to your .r files. Um, so they look like this with the hashtag and a one back tick. Then the file is created, the .rd file is created when you run um, DevTools document. Okay, so this is a simple example of an addition function. All of these lines are the R oxygen code. Then this is your function that you use. Then when you do document, um, it will create the .rd file for you. Um, it kind of looks like LaTeX. Uh, yeah, it's not a mark. Uh, it's not a markdown format. It look like a full yeah. markup, like uh, like mm -hmm. with both uh, opening and handing up. Uh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they they mention it's uh, similar it's to the markup text. language. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a markup language. Markup. Yeah. Um, and then you can look at those files either interactively, right? If you um, load, or sorry, I think you have to build your pack. Yeah, so you have to build your package. And then when the package is installed, you can look at the help pages here. Um, and then you can sort of read it and check it. Is it what you wanted? And then edit as you see fit. And just go in a loop. Yeah, so when you you have to document, then build. But does build build the document? I do not remember. Anyway, I can try. Uh, I think it's the reload. I don't remember. Yeah, it has to yeah. be installed for you to be able to look at the oh, help okay. pages, I believe. So you, I think it doesn't work if you just do the, the load all. I don't okay. think it, it doesn't work. Thanks. Um. Okay. So there are some basic building blocks. So we have the comment, our oxygen comment, and then um, multiple comment lines in a block. Uh, sorry, this is, it does use sort of spacing um, to figure out the different sections. So if you, have a line break it will 
interpret that. And then one of the most important thing I think is these tags. Um, so you can tag the different sections and then our oxygen two knows where to put the information that you typed. Um, the first comment line, like we see here, is a is the title. So it's interpreted as a title, the first line, and then there will be a blank, like a blank line, and then the next paragraph is the description. Um, and yeah, we'll talk more about description. All of your, so this is saying, anything you document has to have a title and description. So you, you have to have something here and here for it to know, know what to do with your oxygen comments. Um, the details section is optional. We'll talk about that some more. And then um, here's just one example. They use a lot of the examples from the stringer package. So this is the example for string unique. So you can see the title, it says remove duplicated strings, the description, and then it has a parameter tag for each argument. And then it has a returns tag. Um, this is some sort of hyperlinking to other functions. Has the example section. Um, and then we know this export, right? That's to put in the namespace. Okay. Um, so some key features when you're typing, right? We probably, most of it, I mean, we've used Markdown before, but when you're using Markdown, you can use Markdown in these R Oxygen 2 comments. So some key features they point out is, is the back tick, right? So you want this to be formatted as inline code, standard back ticks, square brackets for auto linked functions. So this will link, I believe, to the help page of the other, of this older function. Okay. And then this one is you want to link to another function in a different package. So you use the double colon syntax. You can link to vignettes. Um, this is also the way the code, this is how you run a vignette. So that's... Um, they mentioned that was like a nice feature that it was the same. Um, and then you can have lists. So this is a bulleted list with these asterisks. I, I also just built this book. I see all these errors, all of these formatting issues in here, but whatever. I'm not very good at book down. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on the sections, the title, the description, and the details. So they recommend for the title to use sentence case, don't end the title in a full stop. Um, and you must follow the title by a blank line and it should be a succinct description of the function. So they say a lot of the stringer functions have bad titles because they're sort of repeating the word from the function name in the title. And then every title is has repetition saying a pattern and a string. Um, so these repetitions kind of make these titles harder to differentiate between and they mentioned that titles like this are sort of bad for users who are looking. Um, what was it? It was like the user needs to already have it, this specific functionality in mind rather than maybe just like exploring different um, uses. I do that all the time, exploring different uses. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me just read what they said. They said something um it was yeah so they're saying these titles make it hard oh sorry if you don't already have an idea of what the function is 
Yes. Um, so okay. the title isn't very helpful if you are kind of just sort of exploring, trying to figure out what you want to do, right? Like, um, yeah. So that I probably did a bad job, but this is what I was trying to paraphrase. Like they're saying these titles are bad um, if your user doesn't already understand what the function is. Yeah, I got it. With match, like to just basically paraphrase, it match something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and extract it extracts something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I get it, but I, I'm not sure. Like they do not tell like which would be a good name. Yeah. So they say the. Yeah. So yeah. I guess it would be better if they kind of edited these. These they say are examples of good names. I guess. Question the, for Jenny. The difference is. Um, these kind of say, um, like, so these say like create, modify, and delete columns. And so it kind of gives you an idea of what also the output will be. Like yeah. none of these say like, you know. You get the vector or you get yeah, the. Like, like logic of the, you know, presence or absence. I don't, I don't know. like. There's no real indication of the the uh, yeah. output, yeah. Where these kind of have um, some indication of the expected behavior. Yeah. Um. Okay. The description then, right? We I said before is that first paragraph. So you have your title, a blank line, then you have the description. You should summarize the goal of the function in a single paragraph. If you need multi paragraphs or if you just want to have an empty line in your description, you can use this at description tag to, um, you know, tell our oxygen to that it's going to be multi line. And they suggest that not to write your description, you know, write the same day that you write the function, but you should wait until you come back to your, this project and sort of you forgot what your function does. And you, once you re-teach yourself what that function did, then then write the description. Um, it's I a funny know. advice. I don't yeah. know how I would be able to put it in practice. Like, yeah. Could I put like an email, send me on myself a text or like <laughs> check that function, asshole? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like an interesting idea because, um, yeah, I feel like different industry, like different jobs will have different, like for me, I mean, I guess like I'm usually working on one project in like sprints and so they either will have really long periods of time between things like months or like no time like i'll just so you're, do it. you're a perfect perfect <laughs> example so you wait like <laughs> this long time and try to write it <laughs> so well, yeah like i'm not a software engineer so i don't yeah i don't know it's an interesting idea um, okay, then the details section. So this is where you can give more details. Like, uh, you know, sometimes people write down like what their model is. Or I know like for a lot of the statistical distribution, like they have details on what is the prob the distribution function and those sorts of things. Um, but they say most functions, you probably don't need the details section. Uh, if you do write a details section you can use informative uh, markdown headings i know some of the deeplier details have pretty good uh, mark markdown um okay okay arguments they say this is where most of the work will be in documentation probably because you will have lots of arguments. Um, so for every argument, 
well, you don't need to do everyone, but you will have this at param tag, which is short for parameter. It should be, you should have the at param tag, then you have the name of the argument, and then um, you have a succinct summary of the input. So like, is the input a vector? Is the input a matrix? And then what does that parameter do? It's best practice to describe the default argument, right? So like I mentioned the statistics, so like our norm, the default mean is zero. So yeah. you should put that in the description, even though it causes you more trouble later if you ever change that, then you have to make sure to change it in your documentation. And then if the parameter only takes fixed um, values, then you should list those possibilities. And you can also have bulleted lists in your um, descriptions. Yeah, okay. I have seen that uh, sometimes I read this fortune, like, you know, the fortune package, and oh. you read like, and there is one like, basically like you're saying like, if, a, if you have no documentation, scroll, code is working fine because no one knows what it does. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I like it, this one. It's related to this. I <laughs> should find it like, so basically, yes. If you do not document, you cannot be proved to be wrong or whatever. <laughs> so um, I like it. <laughs> you can, uh, this is why I was hesitating earlier when I was talking, you can um, put multiple argument names in one param tag if those arguments are tightly coupled. So this is just one example. Say we have two arguments, x and y, um, and these are a pair. So a lot of the string functions, you give like a start and end. So maybe you put the documentation in one line because they naturally are paired. So you just list the uh, argument name separated by commas. Okay. What happens if you, you know, have multiple functions that essentially take the same arguments? You can save yourself some time by using this at inherit params tag. So you can reuse parameter documentation. Um, I think this was supposed to be a list, but it didn't work. So this tag lets you use reuse parameter documentation. Mm -hmm. You can also, so you need to use it like inherit params and then the function name that has the original documentation. Um, or you can also, if you, if it's in your package, if it's in a dependency, you can use the double colon. Oh, okay. Um, it's uh, like the basic function is like, is it's work like, for, let's say like in the uh, function that air file, like we have foo, then we have bar. But if you want to, in, if foo and bar were in different uh, places or package, we use the package. Uh, is that we call the function of it or we call the package? Like to call foo inside like inherit param foo. Yeah, right here. To be in the same file, you think? Or do you think you can no, I think it just needs to be in your your package versus okay. this is like a dependency. Anyway, it's something you try and you fail and you um, okay. Yeah. So this is just a toy example where foo uses the parameter A, bar uses the parameter A and another and B. parameter B. Um, and so you, you don't have to retype A. So this chunk is the same as if you did actually retype a okay <laughs> um and i believe let me double check this i believe that they say if if you redefine one like it will only inherit the ones that match and aren't defined again i believe um it can be tricky, I guess. Yeah. I mean, in this case, I think it's better to be explicit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, they I always so. say, yeah. Except if it's long, like sometimes it's better to be explicit even if you're on the dry, whatever. Like. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, and then they always caution about like, okay, as soon as you call from a dependency, like you have to, you know, depend on that other person to have good documentation always. Okay, um, let's see, arguments, returns. I mean, this one was pretty easy. So, I mean, straightforward. The return section, you just describe what does your function output. And you want to be pretty explicit about, you know, what is the type, what sort of like size, you know, what what should they be expecting? So uh, the example- and What like, kind of objects? Yeah. yeah. The example was like, you know, when you do filter from DeepLear, you get a data frame, but you shouldn't just say data frame. You should say like a data frame where the rows are subset, you know, so on. Some, some number of columns. Yeah. Okay. Then examples. So we tag the example section with that examples. Um, all my bullets are broken, but this provides the executable code on how to use the function in practice some um some sorry <laughs> i got distracted two spaces yeah. in my <laughs> to, to to go got, to the next one i got a drink delivery so i was distracted cool. like <laughs> um okay so your examples must run without errors and if you we talked about this word before if your code is flaky maybe you use this don't run um around your code but and then also keep in mind right that most users of your functions will look at the examples first and they describe this tension that exists between having readable realistic example code and then also having no errors and no side effects um to the yeah user environment it's hard to predict every situation your examples we run on because well it's hard to predict uh like the environment i would say like the system because there's four situations your examples are run on and that's interactively with the example function it's run during our command check on your computer or any computer you kind of control. Um, it's run by CRAN and it's run when you build a package down website. So you have to consider all of the differences between these four situations. So you mean like we should learn really or send it on Wednesday because the computer is on good day or the moon is correct? Like what, yeah, right. What, what like, the when means. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? Yeah. So what should your examples contain? Some basic functionality. You could highlight some like easy to miss features. Um, it's avoid edge cases, right? That's where you would do your testing. Sectioning in examples is awkward. What I'm and there's no like way to really break up it into different sections, but you can use visual sectioning with just um dashes just a whole line of dashes so that that's explained a lot yeah <laughs> i understand why this example all stack you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah um okay. and then Makes sense. try to use built-in data sets wherever you can or and if your examples are getting more and more detailed or having more side effects, then you should probably turn it into a vignette. Um, and so this is something we've talked about before. Leave the world as you found it, except for in examples, we can't use the like on exit or with or with our package. So if you change something, you have to manually change it back. Um, if you change the options or whatever. Okay, errors. If you need to demonstrate an error, you can wrap your code in the try function or you can wrap your code in don't run. Um, they recommend wrapping it in try because CRAN doesn't let you have don't the don't run. Um, okay. 
and, and I'm not sure the specific details on that, but Cran doesn't like this. Don't run. They'll get get mad, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, dependencies. If you, this is sort of the one place that they kind of say like, it's okay to do a library call in your example because it is expected that when your example is executed, you will have the suggested packages installed. And they suggested? say- Suggested? Yeah, suggested packages, yeah. Okay, so Evan the suggested, okay. Um, and then they say, so the other option, right, would be to do like, if require namespace and get a true false and then have the example in these curly brackets. Um, when you have code in these curly brackets in an example, it doesn't show sort of the output. So the cost of putting code in that is high. Okay. Uh, I can get exactly what they said. Example. Um, oh yeah, examples. Yeah, you can no longer see the intermediate results. Oh, okay. Yeah, if it produced like a bunch of stuff, okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, so, and then saying, but the cost of using library is low because the user, that's a pretty standard error that users know how to fix. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. so load that library, okay. <laughs> And then the last thing was intermixing examples and text. So the alternative to using the examples tag is to use code blocks. Mm. Um, but the downsides are that if you use the this did not format right, but the let me just go back. To yeah, just small R, I think. There's two different. Ones. If you use this code block, yeah. um, it's never run. And so it's just like when you use the backslash don't run, like you don't have a external check. It just classic markdown. Yeah. And you just do the linting. Yeah. And then for these code blocks, they are run every single time you document the package. Um, but it's not the inline stuff, no? Yeah. It's for chunk. Well, maybe it's for inline, I don't know. Yeah, so this is every yeah every time you docu document, which is, but the examples are only run I think every time you build build yeah maybe or check it check your package. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, reusing documentation. So not only can you sort of inherit parameters, but you can combine multiple functions documentation into one page with this at rd name tag. Um, so you can document multiple functions in one place that have a lot in common, uh, use with caution because it can get confusing because you kind of also will have to compare the two. The more functions you have, the more you have, you know, have to compare them. Okay. You can inherit documentation. So you can inherit from a function in your package. This will inherit all the supported components. Um, you can inherit a specific section. So from your function. So maybe you want to inherit, I don't know, big examples or I don't, I don't know something. And then you can inherit the um, documentation for, uh, I can't remember what this is called, but <laughs> quasi, I don't remember. Yeah, it's already a name, but I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. When That's you have, fine. you know, when it takes additional arguments with yeah. the names, <laughs> um, you can share that documentation. And then you can also keep text in an rmd file and that like if you just have the standard block of text that you want to call frequently um you can i'll just show this back again um 
So, for example, now child, yes, you can just say this. Yeah, and but it, it's it's a block code. Yeah, it'll input it into yeah. um, your documentation. Yeah, so, I remember doing that when uh, I didn't know, you know, I had to build like a complex document. Mm. I use the trick, you know, like to build a, the a big document where you know, I was like kind of sourcing everything with that. Oh, yeah. So if you want, like, you have like, you know, you want to build a big document and then instead of having a big markdown file, you divide it and use that trick. Mm -hmm. to... Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I haven't built big markdown files. I've done like with tech where you like input different. Yeah tech so i guess yeah it's like the same thing yeah so i don't know how it handle like the we stack it and all well like the indexes and the stuff like that i don't know like how it will behave with your uh figures and stuff like that oh yeah i have no idea I, me neither um yeah so that was the chapter let me see oh, awesome Yeah, they, I mean, they didn't really have any examples for these three things. I, I do. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm afraid of that. Like, I would prefer, like, you know, to be like, even if it costs, like, the idea of it is like you basically change in one source and then it cascade on the other stuff. Yeah. The yeah. bad idea is like when it cascade, you don't necessarily remember it cascade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Not, it's, yeah, it's, that's it's, true. It's definitely like a trade off, right? Like yeah. you can save yourself by only changing it in one spot, but then like, yeah. And especially like if you change something after someone and you don't know you have urinated <laughs> for it, like you basically yeah. like, so yeah. I don't know. That's very true. Yeah, but I thought it was, I mean, I've read a lot of help files, so I thought it was like pretty straightforward this chapter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, even if I read a lot of them, I discover like you can also call all the example into the console by doing example the name of the function and mm -hmm. you run the example. I I learned that like I think two years ago, and I was like, whoa, I was copy pasting them. <laughs> yeah, I always copy paste. Now I see, like, there's a run examples button on on um oh, yeah. in our yeah. studio it, it what it does is basically like i think the name of the function is example and it's you you basically example the, the name of the function it's run it yeah. yeah it's example example mean if you tap example mean it's run the example form mean yeah oh there's a server yeah it's pretty cool. So um, it's crazy though, like how many people <laughs> just from like teaching R a little bit, like how many people don't read examples? Oh, I read them all the time. Like this I is know, like but... my main source, like <laughs> my first um my first like the professor like bring me to R like long time ago. Uh, and in fact, like she, she, she doesn't teach me how she, she bring me like the blue book, you know, on S. <laughs> so oh. like, so it wasn't, I mean, it, we were using R, but like the book uh, was most, the reference was this book. And uh, she said like, well, I usually understand the help uh, when I understand what, you know, when I have solved my problem. Yeah. And I think like it's improved a lot tremendously over the years yeah 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 so, and so that's good documentation is great yeah definitely more straightforward than testing yeah testing it was example and testing. <laughs> the uh, additions i think changed a lot though on documentation and now i'm seeing like because i copied some stuff from the book source because i was like running late <laughs> um and i see they have like notes to add now that 
they're kind of pushing this quarto thing. Yeah. And now they're having notes like where they need to talk about that. And yeah. Now are you going directly into the directory? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and they have notes. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, next week vignettes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll work for me. See you next week. I will See try as <laughs> okay. I will try to form like the fortune uh <laughs> extract where it that they're like no documentation, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a counterpoint, and also like sometimes I sometimes I learn also like with this absurd stuff. Anyway, that's cool. Well, it's a great pedagogy. <laughs> yeah. So great. Awesome. Uh Therin, thanks for doing it too. Yeah. This week. No problem. And uh, yeah. yeah. Let's let's do a message like saying like how great it was today, how good your presentation was. And so sad those are missing. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs>